highridgechurch.com. Well, good morning, church. Are you excited to be here this morning? Yeah, man, I'm so, so excited to be here with you guys this morning. Be praying for Pastor Jeff and Pastor Don. They're ministering to our spiritual family in Graham right now. So Pastor Jeff, Pastor Don, we love you so much. Come on, can we just give them a round of applause to show them how much we love them? We love you guys. Praying the Holy Spirit uses you right now in this very moment to speak to our grand family and safe travels as well. Well, I have one announcement for you this morning, a really, really important announcement before we get into the word. November 14th. Everyone say November 14th. This is a really, really special Sunday that's coming up for our spiritual family. So here's what I want you to do. I know you have your phones right there in front of you. Go ahead and pull it out, and I want you to mark this date. If you consider High Ridge Church your home, I'm talking to our spiritual family right now, mark this date down. Here's why. On that particular Sunday, we're going to have a Sunday we call Heart for the House Sunday. We do this one time a year, and what it's all about, it's one particular Sunday where we give a special offering to High Ridge Church, and it's above and beyond our tithe, and the reason that we do that is because those funds go to continue to bless other towns, other campuses, other cities, and to continue moving the vision of High Ridge Church forward. And so again, here's what I want you to hear this morning. God's got a big vision for High Ridge Church, amen? And our vision, our, our, the speed of our vision goes at the speed of our generosity. And so we've done this every year now for the past several years, and it's made a huge impact. In fact, next year, we're possibly launching two campuses, one in California, one in Parker County. Come on, somebody excited about Parker County? And so the, the way that we're able to do that is because of your generosity. Now, here's what I want you to hear. I am not asking you to give. I'm asking you to talk to God, to pray, and ask him if he would have you give something. That's what I want you to hear this morning. No guilt trip, no condemnation. Just go and talk with your spouse. You guys begin to pray. That's a month from now. Begin to pray. Miranda and I are doing the same. Lord, what would you have us give? And we're gonna listen to the Lord and we're gonna obey because we know the Lord's gonna use that to make a difference in the lives of others. Amen? So November 14th, if you like it, say boom shakalaka. Man, I am so, did I say I was pumped to be here with you guys today? I am so pumped that you're here. And here's why, because I truly believe today the Lord's gonna show you something that's gonna revolutionize your relationship with him. And hey, that's why you came this morning, amen? You got out of bed, you got the kids ready, you drank half a cup of coffee or 10 cups, however many you drank, you got here this morning and dealt with the chaos of getting ready and putting your makeup on and getting out of bed because you truly believe that God wants to do something in your life. And I'm pumped that you're here because that's exactly what's gonna happen this morning if you'll lean in and tune in to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you this morning, amen? All right, so we're in this series, Life in the Holy Spirit. This is week five, everyone say five. Five weeks that we've been studying the Holy Spirit. Now, for those of you that have missed the past few weeks or or you've been in and out or, hey, maybe this is your first time to High Bridge Church, let me kind of catch you up on why we're doing this series, Life in the Holy Spirit. See, what we've realized is that there are a lot of Christians who know all about God the Father, all about Jesus the Son, and they have heard of the Holy Spirit, but they're not really sure who he is or how to interact with him. So what we've decided to do as a church is spend six weeks really just digging in and studying who the Holy Spirit is and what he does. And so what we've been doing is a lot of people have been attending groups throughout the week, going through a group study, answering those very questions. And here's the reason why we wanna spend so much time on the Holy Spirit is because for you that call yourselves Christians, which means there was a moment in your life where you surrendered your life to Jesus. For a lot of Christians, what they don't understand is that the moment of salvation, they got all the Holy Spirit that they need. But the problem for many of us is that the Holy Spirit does not have all of us. And so the reason we're doing this study is try to help you as a Christian, as a believer, become the man and the woman that God has designed you to be by surrendering all of yourself to the Holy Spirit that lives within you. And so one of the ways that we've tried to help you answer this question, because that's, that's the big question, right? How do I know if the Holy Spirit has all of me? Well, one of the ways that scripture shows us that we can evaluate and answer this question as a believer is by looking at the fruit of our life. So the foundational passage that we've been digging into on the weekend services is found in Galatians chapter five. Here's what it says. 
but the Holy Spirit produces, everyone say produces, this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So how do you know if the Holy Spirit has all of you? When you evaluate your life, are you seeing these fruits being produced in your life? One of the largest concrete structures in the world is known as the Three Gorges Dam found in China. We have a picture of it here on the screen for you. Check this out. This is the Three Gorges Dam dam found in China. It's the largest concrete structure in the world. It's 60 stories high and it's over a mile long. How many of you have ever seen the Hoover Dam? Raise your hand if you've seen the Hoover Dam. It's massive, right? There's enough concrete in that dam to build five Hoover Dams. It's massive. It was a $24 billion project. It took 40,000 workers 17 years to build it. It's massive. But here's the thing about this huge structure. It's had negative impacts on the environment. In fact, scientists have found that it's eroded the riverbanks, it's caused more pollution. Not only that, when they built this, it displaced 1.13 million people. They had to lose their homes and move. But out of all those destruction, all those consequences of this dam, the greatest consequence of that dam has actually impacted the whole world. In fact, you don't even know it, but the fact that they built that dam has negatively impacted you sitting right here in 2021 in Texas. Here's what NASA discovered. After they built this massive dam, they looked at the sheer mass of the water and the concrete and the weight that's in this one particular place on the planet. And here's what NASA has discovered. This is crazy. NASA has discovered that the mass and the weight of this structure and the water that it's holding has slowed the rotation of the earth by 0.06 microseconds. Okay, how do you know you've achieved as an engineer? You built something that slows the rotation of the earth. And here's the question that I asked when I found this with National Geographic. I'm like, is that legal? Like, I feel like it should be in the Geneva Convention. Hey, countries, build whatever you want, but if it slows the rotation of the earth, that's the line in the sand we can't cross, right? Like, is that even legal? (laughs) So this massive physical dam has had massive consequences on human lives. And I'm here today to tell you that for some of you sitting in this room today, you've got a spiritual dam in your life. And that spiritual dam that you've allowed to exist in your life is withholding the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Because who produces the fruit in our life? The Holy Spirit. The fruit that we just read in Galatians 5, which we all desire, right? Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all the things listed in Galatians 5. We all want that for our life, amen? But the problem for many of us, and I think if we were honest with ourselves, we're not experiencing all this fruit in our life. And again, what I want you to understand throughout this series, it is not your responsibility to go and do those things. It's our responsibility to get out of the way, to break down the spiritual dam in our life that's negatively impacting not just our life, but our marriage, our children, our business, our country, and every place that you step into because the Holy Spirit wants the fruit to flow through your life to impact others, amen? So the title of my message today is simply this. Let him flow. Everyone say, let him flow. Let him flow. Let's pray as we get ready to dig into this today. Lord, we lift you up and we thank you so much for who you are. Holy Spirit, I invite you into this moment, into this place to use my voice to build and encourage your people. Speak to us today for your glory and for your namesake. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. So in this particular passage, Galatians 5, there are nine fruits of the spirit. And each week we've been looking at two. And so today we're gonna talk a little bit about goodness and faithfulness. These are the two that we're gonna focus in on today. So I wanna define these two for you and what my research has found throughout this week. I found some very interesting things. You know what I love about studying the Bible? Despite the the fact that I've got a master's degree in it and I've been studying and reading the Bible for years, I've read through it a few times, I still uncover so many good things when I spend time with my heavenly father. So I wanna challenge you to do the same. It's a lifelong journey of studying and growing in his word, amen? That was free, it's not even my notes. Here it is, what is goodness? I want you to hear this. Goodness, here's the definition. Goodness is something that comes from God. So where does goodness come from? Good, that's important. 
Goodness is something that comes from God and it shows itself through our life in spiritual excellence and moral excellence. Here's another simple definition of goodness. It's doing the right thing. And by the way, doing the right thing is always the right thing. So when I dug into this word, again, we find it in Galatians 5. I wanted to go and study the New Testament, like go and search, where is this word found in the Greek original language? For those of you that are new to church, the Bible was not written in English. It was actually written in ancient languages. Hebrew, there's some Latin and then Greek. The New Testament's all Greek. And what's fun about studying the Greek language, you hear pastors do this all the time. It's not because we're trying to make ourselves look really smart. It's because when you dig into the Greek language, you get to uncover a lot of really deep things that really help you understand the weight of the message in the scriptures. So when I went and studied this word goodness in the Greek, here's what's interesting about it. It's only found four times in the New Testament. Isn't that interesting? Because I feel like we talk about the goodness of God a lot, right? but it's only found four times in the New Testament. Now here's what's even more interesting than that. It's only found in scripture. When you go and study the ancient Greek secular writings, this Greek word goodness is found in no other writings outside of scripture. So here's what I believe, that goodness is a term that can only define the character of God. It's that holy, it's that sacred, it's that deep, that it's a word that really can only define the character of God. And get, this is something that is is exemplified through our life and is given to us by God. It is a word that describes him. So here's another way to think about it, church. If goodness is a word that can only describe the character of God, watch this, the world's access to God's goodness can only be found through his sons and daughters. The goodness of God exists within you. Again, it's a fruit. Who produces the fruit? The Holy Spirit. And he produces that through you. And this word goodness, again, the only way that the world has access to God's goodness is through his vessels, which he has chosen to be you and I. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Again, another reason why we've got to break down these spiritual dams in our life to allow these fruits to flow so that God can exemplify himself, show himself to the world, amen? Now let's look at the word faithfulness. What is faithfulness? And I I love how it ended up this particular Sunday that with all the different ways we could have arranged the fruits of the spirit, we put these two together because here's the definition of faithfulness. It's confidence in the goodness of God. So faith is simply confidence. We say this all the time at High Ridge. Faith, faithfulness is simply us staying in a place of being confident in the goodness of God that can only be found in him. So again, here's what's interesting about this idea of faithfulness. When you feel like you're lacking faith in your life, because again, when you go and study faith throughout scripture, watch this, you cannot produce faith. Did you know that? As a Christian, no matter how much you love Jesus, no matter matter how well you sing or how good you take notes or don't fall asleep when the preacher's preaching, you cannot produce faith on your own. Did you know that? So again, here's another fruit in our life that simply if we're not experiencing confidence in God. So let me ask you this question right now, Christian. I don't know what you're going through. Some of you, you've got marital issues, you've got issues with your kids, maybe it's financial, maybe it's health, maybe it's stress and anxiety within your your, your business or your workplace. Right now in in this season that you're in, are you fully confident in God's goodness? Oh, that's a deep question, friend. Are you truly confident in the goodness of God? And hey, maybe you're sitting here today and your answer is yes, absolutely, Zach. You're in one of those seasons where, man, you're just full of faith. But for some of you, maybe you just attended a funeral. For some of you, maybe your finances aren't where you want them to be. Maybe for some of you, you're battling some health things in your life and you feel like your faith, your confidence in God is at an all-time low. What I want you to hear today, listen to me, it is not on you to produce more faith. When we lack faith in our life, here's what begins to happen. We simply get in our own way. Because what I want you to hear again throughout this series and the fruits of the Holy Spirit is that you don't have to carry the burden of going out and being those things. You've simply just gotta get out of the way 
and let him flow through your life. Listen, church, this is so important. First service thing, get this, you're getting it. For some reason, you're blessed. Hear this. What the enemy, oh, this is good. I should write this down. Miranda, remind me of this for third service. What the enemy wants you to do is make you think that it's on you. The enemy wants to make you think that if you're not good, if you're not faithful, if you don't have joy, if you don't have peace, it's because you're not working hard enough. You're not reading enough scripture. You're not giving enough money. You're not serving enough. That's what the enemy wants you to think. Here's why. Because if he can get you to think that, then he'll get you away from relationship and he'll get you into religion. And what I want you to hear today is that it's on the Holy Spirit that lives within you. That's what I love about Christianity. The Bible says that you are saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. See, you're saved. For those of you that gave your life to Jesus, you're saved. Nothing, everyone say nothing, can change your eternity. So now let's talk about this term, you are being saved. Another Christianese word for that is sanctification. It means to be sanctified, to be set apart. Do you realize that your sanctification, you becoming more like Christ, you becoming a, a, a Christ bearer, like showing the world the good things and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, do you realize that's on the Holy Spirit, it's not on you? But where we mess up is we get in the way of what the Holy Spirit wants to do in and through your life. Do you realize, friend, despite the storm and the valley that you're experiencing in your life right now, the Holy Spirit wants to give you joy, peace, patience, and all the other fruits that we're seeing in Galatians 5. God wants you to experience that as his children. Now, does that mean that life will be without, without problems or issues? Or No, absolutely not. But we know by studying the scripture that you can experience these fruits in your life despite what you're going through. Okay, Pastor Zach, that's great. Then why am I not experiencing those things? Probably because you've allowed this spiritual dam to build up in your life that is withholding the fruits of the Spirit from flowing through you. So here's the question I wanna answer today. How do we allow, everyone say allow, goodness and faithfulness to exist in our life? How do we allow it to exist? If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down today. First, you have to believe that goodness and faithfulness exist within you. Church, when it comes down to the fruits of the Spirit, you have to believe that it's within you. You have to believe that the Spirit of God, now think about this, this is a weighty idea that I think for some of us that have spent a lot of time in church, we become numb to this idea. The God of the universe who spoke it into existence, who can measure the universe with the span of his hand. At the moment that you said yes to him, he said yes to you, and he placed his spirit within you. The spirit of God lives within you, despite what you've done and despite where you come from. The spirit of God lives within you. But here's the problem for some of you, you know that, and you would say at times you believe that, but you have yet really to surrender to that idea. So as I was coming up with this point and I was thinking about this idea of surrendering to the Spirit, the Lord reminded me of Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. This is a parable that Jesus gives about the kingdom of heaven. Here's what it says. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So Jesus here is talking about the kingdom of heaven. This guy comes across it, realizes how valuable the kingdom of heaven is, so he goes and sells all that he has because he wants the kingdom of heaven. He wants that treasure. So I went and studied this idea of the kingdom of heaven, right? Many of us that have spent any time in church, we've heard of this term, but I want to actually go dig and, and dig into this because for most of us, we would think, okay, the kingdom of heaven, that's referring to heaven, where believers go to spend eternity with Jesus and everything's great and awesome. But here's the deal, when I went and studied the term, this phrase, kingdom of heaven, throughout the New Testament, it actually has two meanings. Yes, one meaning is this future reality that we will experience as believers in a place where there are no more tears, there are no more suffering, an incredible place that we can't fathom in our wildest imagination. But there's also another meaning to the kingdom of heaven that we find in the New Testament. In fact, just in the book of Matthew, it's found 34 times. And a lot of those times, it's referred to as a present reality that you and I can experience. Okay, so let me say it again. 
What is the kingdom of heaven? It's something that refers to the future where believers will spend eternity, but it also references a present reality that you and I can experience. I have a problem with that. Because as I was studying this, I'm like, okay, the kingdom of heaven is a present reality. Okay, what exactly does that mean? So I had to do some more studying. What defines then the kingdom? Because that's what we had to boil it down to, right? Like, what is the kingdom? So when you go and study this idea in scripture, the kingdom is any place where Jesus's lordship is recognized. So anywhere that Jesus's lordship is recognized and acknowledged, that is the kingdom of heaven. So again, the problem I have when I heard this is a present reality is because I don't know about you, but when I look at the world that we live in, when I get on social media, I don't see the kingdom of heaven. And so it got me thinking, man, okay, then where is that kingdom? Okay, the kingdom is anywhere that the lordship of Jesus is recognized. Okay, the kingdom of heaven is present, it's here, then where is it at? And then I realized the kingdom of heaven is in you and it's in me. Because at the moment that you said yes to Jesus, you surrendered to his lordship. Right now, though we live in a fallen, broken world, and yes, God is still sovereign, his lordship is not recognized across this globe. But it is for those who call themselves believers, it is recognized within you. So think about this. You have to believe that the fruits of the spirit live within you. You have to believe that the kingdom of heaven is present because if you don't believe that and surrender to that, then the world never gets to experience the fruit of the spirit in the kingdom of heaven. That's why it's so important for some of you to buy into this idea. You've got to surrender because for some of you, though you're saved, you have not surrendered completely to the idea that any of these fruits of the spirit, patience, goodness, joy, peace, any of those things that are listed in Galatians 5, you have still yet to surrender to this idea that it's within you. And the reason that you've yet to surrender to that idea is because you're still listening to the lies of the enemy. Because here's what some of you think. You know, Pastor Zach, that's great, but I'm not good. There's no goodness in me. I can't find joy. Do you know what I've done, Zach? Do you know where I've been? And for a lot of you, because of what you've done and where you've been, you have yet to completely, you want the fruits of the Spirit, but you have yet to completely surrender to the idea that you can actually experience those things in your life. And because that's the mentality that you're in, here's what you do. You look at me, you look at Pastor Jeff, you look at Mother Teresa, you look at Billy Graham. Not, not that I'm trying to put myself in that category, but you'll look at those, what the world would consider spiritual people. And here's what you think. Well, I can't be that spiritual, so I must not have the same portion as them. So, so you look at me, or you look at Pastor Jeff, or you look at anyone else in your life that you consider spiritual, and here's what you tell yourself, I can never be that. I can never experience that level of joy and peace or any other fruit that you wanna express. All the while, your heavenly Father, who paid the ultimate price for you to be set free, what does the Bible say? He who is free is free indeed. And someone needs to hear this this morning. If God didn't bring you to church today for anything else, hear this. You are a true son. You are a true daughter. And you can be the man and the woman that he has called you to be. You can experience these things in your life despite your circumstances. But as long as you continue to think and compare yourself to others, as long as you continue to think, you know what, that's not me. I can't be that. I can't allow that to flow through my life. Then what you're doing every time you make that conscious decision, you're building that spiritual dam within your life. And God wants you to be set free today. You can experience these things. I mean, think about this, this is where, this is where I felt the weight this week when I was studying this. Because what my Bible is telling me is that despite what I go through, and I've been through some hard times. Anybody else in this room? I've been through some stuff. And what my Bible is telling me is that even in the midst of that, I can still experience goodness and kindness and patience and all these other, these fruits that we see in Galatians 5. And so because of the fact that many of us, we still don't experience this, we have to keep coming back to this idea that we have got to get out of our own way. We've got to get out of our own way because the Holy Spirit that produced the fruit in Billy Graham, the Holy Spirit that produced fruit through Mother Teresa, anyone else that you want to put in this, listen, it's the same spirit. Do you understand that? 
It's the same. God didn't go, hey, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you 50% more. I'm going to give you a little bit more. No, he gave you all the Holy Spirit that you need, every single one of us. But whether we see that fruit in our life or not is determined by whether we get out of the way or not. And this is important, friend, because point number two is simply this. We allow the fruit of the Spirit. We allow him flowing through us to impact others. Do you realize that everything, everyone say everything, everything that you are as a human being, you are that way for the glory of God. Now that's a heavy statement because that includes your perfections and your imperfections. Everything that you are, you are for the glory of God. Now, how do you become that? By allowing the the Holy Spirit to flow through you and impact others. It's important that you realize that for the world, this is how they know who our Heavenly Father is. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew, so let your light shine before others? Why? So that they may see your good works and give glory to who? Your Father who is in heaven. The world will know who our heavenly father is. Here's another way to say it. The world will know our father's goodness by the way we act and by the way we live. Oh, Zach, well, that creates a pressure. I don't know if I signed up for that. Well, you did when you said yes to Jesus. But listen to me. Hey, I'm trying to help you here. Let's go back to what I said earlier. It's not on you. It's not on you to go out there and be this Super Christian. I don't cuss. I don't listen to certain radio stations. I don't get on Facebook. I don't do this. I don't do That's not on you. It's on you to just get out of the way and let the Spirit be who the Spirit wants to be through you. You're just a conduit to the world. And if we'll get out of the way, may we change their perspective. Because their perspective is broken. Do you realize the world does not think that our God is good? Where do you think they got that idea from? Because for many of us, we struggle. We allow these spiritual dams to exist in our life. And what happens to many of us is we've allowed it because here's what we do. Well, you know what? My spirituality, my relationship with Jesus, that's a private thing. And so what we do is we compartmentalize. Well, this is, this is how I live with Jesus. This is what I do with him, but it's just between me and him. And then, then over here is my work. This is my career, I'm this person over here at work and in my career, and then, okay, here's my family over here, and I'm, I'm this way with my, and that's what we do. We compartmentalize, and can I just remind you that God never designed it that way? The, the fruit of the Spirit and who God's called you to be, the kingdom of heaven that God desires for the world to experience is to flow through you in all areas of your life and not just some. And again, it's not on you to produce these things. It's on you to get out of the way. So we allow it to impact others. Here's just a couple of challenges for you today. Let me ask you this question. Where are you serving others? I want you to seriously ask yourself that question, man. Where am I serving others? Where am I helping others? Even when it doesn't benefit me, where am I serving others? Now, some of you, you've made the connection between your career and what you do for a living. Maybe your gifts, your talents, and your hobbies, maybe you're using those to glorify God and help others. For some of you, you've made that connection. More power to you. But the reality is I'd be willing to bet that for many of you, you can't answer that question right now. And I wanna challenge you today that you've gotta step out and go, okay, if the fruit of the spirit is real in my life and I'm, if I'm allowing it to flow, that means it's gonna lead me then to serve others. I wanna challenge you to start going and serving the next generation. Start serving kids. And I'm not talking about just here at High Ridge, any area of your life. Find some children, find some teenagers and just start serving them. Here's what that means. Watch this. Just get out of the way, be around them and let the fruit flow through your life. And watch the impact it's gonna have. Serve. Do you you realize that in this building, that we have kids over there in that kid's wing right now, mine included, that for some of them, This is the only place where they hear that they are loved and that their life matters. Think about that for a moment. Children over there right now, this is the only place that they hear it and they're hearing it because we have incredible volunteers over there that are allowing the fruits of the spirit to flow through their life and impact those kids. On Wednesday night, we have teenagers coming through those doors right there and showing up to this room, some of which are right now thinking about how they're gonna take their own life. 
And you know what the biggest problem we have in this world is? Jesus said it a long time ago and it still holds true today. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You know, one of the greatest issues we have, and this isn't just a high ridge, this is happening across churches right now in America since the pandemic, that we've got plenty of harvest, but we don't have enough people to go and tell those kids that their life matters. We don't have enough people who are willing to show up on a Wednesday night and do the, do the hard work that it takes. Well, Zach, I don't know how to interact with teenagers. I don't know the lingo. I don't even have TikTok. I don't know how I'm gonna relate to it. Just let him flow. Just let him flow. Let him flow through your life. Do you realize, you know how I many stories I've heard at this church in the nine years that I've been here of kids from that kid's wing and, and, and teenagers going through this student ministry who, who walked out of here changed simply because there was a leader who was willing to be in proximity with them and just allow the spirit to flow. And they didn't put the burden on themselves to be some scholar to, to have a master's degree in theology, they said, you know what? I don't know a lot about the Bible and I'm surely comfortable going, I don't know the answer to that question, but what I do know how to do is be around others and allow the Holy Spirit to flow. Are you serving others? And again, I'm not limiting it to, to kids here at High Ridge or youth here at High Ridge. We'd love for you to come be a part of that if you choose so. But my challenge to you is ask yourself, man, where, where are you serving others? The other place that we allow the Holy Spirit to flow through our life and impact others through generosity, with our time, treasure, and our talents. Do you realize that you're sitting in this building right now? Because somewhere in the past, years ago, men and women, and some of them were you, decided to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through their life in goodness and faithfulness, and we're sitting in this building now because they allowed the Spirit to flow through their life and through their generosity, which led them to giving and trusting God with their finances and serving not just with their time, but also with their treasures and their talents, using their gifts to be the body that God's called them to be. And here's what I love about High Ridge. It's not just limited to this room. In fact, last week I got to go to California and see Pastor Levi. For those of you that are new to High Ridge, Pastor Levi used to be on staff here at our Fort Worth location and we sent him to California and he's gonna be launching High Ridge Church, California, January 30th. Yes, it's awesome. Go follow them on Facebook and on Instagram, by the way. It's High Ridge Rockland. Okay, Rockland, California is where they're at. But here's what was awesome about that trip. I got to go with the team and we helped with the sound system and we were helping him lay out the building, look at kids and the flow and all that stuff. But here's what I found most fascinating about that trip is that I got to meet men and women on the other side of the country whose lives have been changed and impacted by God using High Ridge Church and the vision of this church. These are people that have never stepped foot in this building. They've never met you, they've never met me. And yet they're bought into the vision of High Ridge because God has used High Ridge as a conduit for the fruits of the spirit to flow through. And it's making an impact even on the other side of the country. And that is happening, listen, because of some of your generosity and because many of you in the past, you decided to allow the spirit to flow through your life and you were gonna allow that flow to impact others. It's not just California, it's Longview, Texas. It's Graham, it's Mineral Wells, it's Beloved in Ethiopia, Africa. It's Hope Local, which is a local ministry now that's helping kids in the foster care and adoptive systems to help show them that they're loved and that their life matters. When we surrender, when we allow him to flow, it impacts others. So the last thing I want you to hear today is this, you gotta let him flow through you. And again, I wanna capitalize on this term, let. Because it's not on you to produce the fruit. It's not on you to make the fruit happen, but it's absolutely on you and me to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit be who he wants to be. You want joy, you want peace, friend surrender all. You want goodness, faithfulness, kindness, all those other, free, you, you gotta surrender. And can I tell you that's hard? And here's where it starts, right here. It starts right here. You gotta lay down your fears. You gotta lay down your excuses and just let him flow. Amen? Let me pray for you this morning. Lord, thank you so much for your word, God. Thank you for what you've called us to be a part of. 
God, as I was talking about the other campuses and the things that you're doing, God, I know you're doing great things through a lot of other churches, and I'm so thankful for that. But I'm also thankful that you've called me to be a part of High Ridge Church. I'm so thankful that I have a front row seat to watching you change the world through your sons and daughters. My prayer today, God, for every person sitting in this room, no matter how young they are or how old they are and everyone in between, God, my prayer, my desire is that for all of us, that we would break down these spiritual dams that exist in our soul, that we would allow your spirit to flow through us so that we can continue to see you make a difference in this world, so that we can experience the plan and the destiny that you have for us. Give us strength, Lord. And for my brothers and sisters that showed up today, God, their marriage is on the rocks. They're going through some issues in their life. Maybe they just lost a loved one. Whatever it is in their life, whatever their circumstances are that are causing them to lack confidence in you, God, I pray you give them strength today to not have more faith, but to simply get out of the way and to just trust you. Allow your spirit to flow through them. Give them peace. Despite the fact that we don't know what tomorrow brings, give them peace, give them joy, give them goodness, kindness and all those fruits, Lord, for your glory and for your namesake. Thank you, Lord. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, one more prayer for you today before we dismiss. Today's message was really geared towards believers. A believer is someone who has actually surrendered their life to Jesus. Because the reality is, is if you're in here and you've done religion but not a relationship with Jesus, if you've never surrendered your life completely to him, then you cannot experience the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You don't get the spirit of God until you surrender your life to Jesus. And surrender to the fact that he died on the cross for you. Surrender to the fact that he conquered sin and death when he walked out of that grave three days later. So I wanna give you the opportunity today to surrender your life to that relationship. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray a prayer and you can pray this prayer with me quietly to yourself if you'd like, or you can use your own words. It's not a magical prayer. We're just surrendering to Jesus in this moment. So if that's you, friend, I wanna invite you to pray with me quietly to yourself. Just pray with me, friend. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I know I've messed up. God, I wanna ask you to forgive me of my sins and my mistakes. And right now, God, I wanna turn from doing life my way. And I wanna start doing life your way. And Jesus, I wanna invite you into my heart and into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. And I wanna thank you, Jesus. I wanna thank you for dying on that cross for me, for conquering sin and death, and for just now hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, there are some of you here today that you just prayed that prayer. And I'm not gonna call you out. I'm not gonna embarrass you or anything like that. I just wanna celebrate your decision. So for just those that prayed with me, no one else looking up, no one looking around, just those that prayed. We just lift up your hand real quick. Just those that prayed. No one else looking up, no one looking around. Just those that prayed. Awesome, got you in the back, sir. Great. Just those that prayed. Awesome, got you, sir. Great, awesome. Got you, sweetie. Awesome. Just those that prayed. No one else looking up. No one looking around. Awesome. With heads bowed and eyes closed, those of you that prayed with me, would you just look up at me real quick and make eye contact? Man, I'm so, so excited about your decision today. Got you, man. This is just the beginning of a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. But listen, it is just the beginning. And God desires for you to go on this journey with a spiritual family. So I have one of two things I want you to do for me. Either one, you can text High Ridge to the number you see on the screen, or you can grab the green card in the seat pocket in front of you. It says connect card on top. And just let us know that you prayed to receive Christ and you can drop it in the wooden box when you leave here in just a moment. Man, I'm so, so excited for you. Hey church, can we give it up for those that took a step towards Christ today? Come on, show them some love. Listen, I love you guys so much. Pastor Jonathan, tell us what's next. Oh, come on, can we put our hands together one more time for all that God has done in this place, giving Him the glory. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, as we have some of our team members that are gonna make their way to their serving locations, I just wanna say again, thank you for coming to High Ridge Church this morning. We are so glad that you chose to come and worship with us this morning. Now, for those of you who prayed that prayer with Pastor Zach, 
we would love to connect with you. You can see this handy dandy connect card in the back seat pocket in front of you. Go ahead and fill that out, turn it into the boxes or one of the team members because we would love to connect with you as you start this journey in your relationship with the Lord. Also, if you are someone who's been a high rate and you just want to know more information, you want to find out more information about what we're doing here, get connected in community, this is also for you. Go ahead and fill this out, check out some of the things you're interested in, turn it into a team member, and we'd love to follow up with you. But here at Highwood Church, a part of our vision here is to discover purpose and ultimately help you make a difference. Now, I love that because we have some amazing volunteers here. Actually, can we put our hands together for our volunteers and how amazing they are? We have some great volunteers. This is David and his wife, Tina, who are just loving what they're doing, serving in the student ministry. They get a great opportunity to show the love of Jesus to each and every student that comes into the doors. And man, what a great way to step into that discovering purpose and making a difference. Now, this is made possible because of your generosity here at High Ridge Church. You guys have grabbed a hold of the vision. So I wanna say thank you for those who have partnered with us in making a difference in our society. If you would like to also give to High Ridge, and be a part in joining us in making a difference. There are many different ways that you can give as seen on the screen. We are so excited for the things that are happening. We have quite a few things that are coming up this month. In fact, everybody say October 13th. October 13th, where are all of my high schoolers and middle schoolers? Yeah, go ahead and raise your hands, raise your hands. Yes, yes, we have Youth by Youth coming up this Wednesday. Super excited for that. I'm the youth pastor. I get to be excited about some things. So it's really exciting because this is youth run by the youth. In fact, we're going to have three incredible up and coming communicators. Most of them are in this room today, Uh, but but they're going to be speaking on what the Lord has put on their heart. And we are super excited to help unlock that potential in their life. So if you are a student, if you're a youth from sixth to 12th grade, we'd love to have you on Wednesday night. It starts at seven o'clock and a little surprise wear some white clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. We have a little bit of a surprise after service. Don't worry, parents, they're gonna be okay. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a great time. Uh, We also have October 31st is our child child dedication. I love this this opportunity. It's basically just a chance for parents to say, hey, I'm gonna raise my child in the ways of the Lord. And we as a community, a body of believers, backing that up. And so I love that to get that chance to partner with you. Uh, Registration is cut off on the 21st. So just make sure you jump in on that and don't miss out on the fun. Let's go ahead and let's stand together as we get ready to leave today. If you came here to High Ridge Church with something heavy on your heart that you need some prayer and support for, we're going to have our prayer team come forward. Please don't leave here with that burden, but get prayed for, get support, get that community. And with that, go and have a blessed week and go Cowboys! I'm so glad you connected with us online today. As followers of Christ, you and I share the privilege of strengthening and encouraging others for life. The easiest way to do that is simply sharing this message on your favorite media platform. Be sure to include your biggest takeaway from today's service. Here at High Ridge, we believe God answers prayer and can even do the impossible. If there's something weighing on your heart and mind today, we would love to encourage and support you by partnering with you in prayer. To share your prayer request, email prayer at highridgechurch.com. Through High Ridge, you have unlimited access to Right Now Media, the world's largest streaming library of video Bible study resources. In addition to series on books of the Bible, Right Now Media has videos for everyone in your family for a variety of topics like marriage, parenting, personal finances, mental health, and more. There's even a library just for kids with over 2,000 safe, entertaining videos. You can sign up today by visiting highridgechurch.com forward slash right now media. We would always love to see you in person at one of our High Ridge campuses. To find times and locations, visit highridgechurch.com. Otherwise, we'll meet you back.